Oh boy, it's finally here. Please, don't get too excited. Actually, please get excited. There's not much hype surrounding this. Boruto episode 292 just aired. And if you don't know, this is the episode that was most anticipated. Why? Well, not only did it have one of the most anticipated fights that was in the manga, but the Boruto anime has not looked the best. Actually, it hasn't looked the best since the Jigen arc concluded in 2021. And this specific episode was stated to have a really good staff. And therefore, it should have looked really good. Now, this episode is definitely the best that has aired so far. It did truly have some really good cuts of animation. However, even in this episode, it was very obvious to tell the schedule had caught up with the staff, which is one of the main problems that this arc had suffered as a whole. Scheduling was a big issue, but also animator competition. Too many shows are being made and not enough talent to go around. So because of this, Boruto clearly suffered, where animators that would usually work under Boruto were not present for an episode like this. People like Hugh Cobble or Vincent Chancer were featured on Attack on Titan Season 4 or One Piece Respect and not Boruto, you get my point. So even if this episode looked really good, it still suffered. This episode starts out with some pretty odd storyboarding. We have a full camera rotation that is done in 3D, as we see both Boruto and Coat standing across from each other, with some fair distance in between each other. But in the direct next shot, they're right in front of each other. But in the next scene, Boruto creates a massive Rasengan, showing some massive distance between Boruto and Code. Makes the scene feel kind of wrong, as we don't have a real idea of where our characters are. However, there are some really, really good effects animations here, and good effects animation is pretty prominent throughout the entirety of this episode. But for the most part, outside of the effects animation, the first half of the episode felt pretty limited. Boruto and Kawaki have some small scuffles as well that look pretty stiff as well. And this is pretty consistent throughout a lot of the episode. You do have some stiff movements here and there, but the effects animation is really good until we get into the long awaited Boruto versus Kawaki fight. Right off the bat, we get some really dynamic stuff, really good perspectives and movements with the 3D background. However, there's a little bit of stiff movement with this Boruto running animation, but to most people, it's not that noticeable. We get some more hand to hand combat Sakuga. And there's one thing I do want to point out. I'm sure a lot of longtime Naruto fans have noticed this. And if you didn't know, it's a direct homage to Naruto and Sasuke's final fight at the end of Naruto Shippuden. Now, I do use homage very loosely. On one hand, you could say it's just a callback to the scene, but on another hand, you could argue that they're using this animation, as once again, the schedule is caught up with the team, and so you could argue it's a shortcut. However, the Boruto anime has done some of these callbacks before. For example, in the Naruto and Ishiki fight, they've done this before, so take that with what you will. However, once again, I'm not a fan of the storyboarding here. When Kawaki launches the fire, Boruto backflips a couple times, then he backflips to one of the cubes. However, it's very weird as he appears on one of the cubes already, but us at the audience have no indication that it was near the area. But for us, it kind of just looks like he just backflipped off the screen for no reason. Again, stuff like this kind of make the scene feel wrong. What comes next is pretty well done though. We get some good hand to hand Sakuga with some competent smears, and it is pretty well storyboarded and how the characters combat each other, even if it is inferior than a lot of the hand to hand combat scenes we've seen. And then what comes after is a marvelous display of good perspectives, smears, and effects animation. As this cut was done by somebody named Ken Imaizumi, I hope I said that right. And if you don't recall, this is the same person who actually did this code running animation in the previous episode. So it was nice that we saw him return as he did probably the most iconic part of this fight scene, with very, very good build up to it, however, slightly underwhelming effects animation at the end, but overall, very, very good cut. The rest of the fight is pretty tame, with not really any noteworthy cuts of Sakuga. We do have this scene with Boruto getting impaled, and this is just another indication that people could use of the schedule catching up, because this is reused from the Garo fight. It's literally the same animation and the same perspectives. This is essentially what concludes the episode as we close out. This episode looked very good, it really truly did, and was a massive step up from the previous episodes. However, due to the poor conditions this series was under, even the best looking episode, the episode that was significantly hyped, suffered in quality dramatically. If we're actually comparing this episode to even the Jigen arc, I'd say this is weaker than every single fight of the Jigen arc, except the Delta or the Kasha Koji fight. But yes, this episode was under some terrible circumstances, and it really does make sense on why they're going on hiatus. And maybe after next week and when they go on hiatus, they can come back with a much stronger schedule and much stronger conditions overall. However, I'd love to know what you guys think about this episode. Did you guys like it? Did you guys dislike it? Please tell me in the comments down below. If you guys are new to the channel, please make sure to leave a like and sub. Ring that notification bell so you can get caught up whenever I post. And yeah, that's it. I am Debunked by Aaron. I'd love for you guys to have a fantastic day as I'm signing out.